What you're about to see and hear exists in reality in Jamaica and has become one of the many unfortunate chapters. After accepting loans and conditionalities from the World Bank, lost its largest cash crop markets due to competition with Western imports. Today, countless farmers are out of work, for they are unable to compete with the large corporations. Greetings, massive. Wagwan, Jamaica. It is important that we make some connections with our history. The departure from course during this period of industrialization and industrial development was not due to external forces. It was due to the misadventure of the PNP, which diverted us from the path of economic growth, selling the people of Jamaica false hope and unrealistic dreams for which the country is still paying today. Those countries that were not distracted from the path of economic development and maintained a steady and balanced course managed to align their education systems and their economies to take advantage of the opportunities of industrialization, even if they were lagging behind at the time of the third industrial revolution. All right, and I said the government, them, 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 boy, I don't know what, because them tell her one thing and them still do the next thing. So come like everybody else, I grab. From top, everybody I grab. See, so you find it's a little small man now. He might have to try to grab a thing for himself, you know. Our politicians are more interested in getting into or staying in Parliament than point power than delivering on the promises that Jamaicans need delivered on. The guy who is them, which sound like we, a fight against them, JPS, which is the government where we put into place, which is Palwell, which is him. Inside with them, against the people them, who the people them did not look upon him and say, but look how them do to we. So if he said they didn't have a friend up there, like, you know, what a friend we have in Jesus, you know, it come like we don't have no friend up there, so because them become them, and them side up now with them, and then now we there, so now still I wonder how the light will ever go. On September 1, 2011, Christopher Dudosko pleaded guilty to conspiracy racketeering charges in a Manhattan court in the United States. In June the following year, he was sentenced to 23 years in prison. Court documents reveal that Coke was involved in gun running, narco trafficking, and in murder. A long line of politically connected criminals like Zeke Phipps and Donovan Bulby Bennett, who were evident in the Jamaican political scene. For Coke to be extradited, a state of emergency had to be declared after Coke's supporters attacked the security forces. Thereafter, the response of our security forces led to the deaths of over 70 persons in the community of Tivoli Gardens. Regrettable, but the Jamaican state and people had no alternative but to declare a state of emergency in response to an attack on the society. What this demonstrates more than anything else is the extent to which political criminality was embedded in our country and the degree to which crime and corruption are among the most problematic factors preventing investment, national and international, from creating jobs, generating income, and growing our economy. An entire nation brought to a standstill. Politicians who used to give the youth them gun and when them can't control the youth them. Because a bigger man now, them have visa now, them can go away and make deals with the people them over foreign and make them get them own gun and them own drugs. Come back and Jamaica, control up certain money and things. Politicians can't control them, yet the politicians say, that man is a damn man, we have to get rid of that man. You know see it? Uh, Adon is simply put a crime boss, a powerful criminal figure who typically heads 
a gang um, or better still an organized crime network. Uh, they have access to considerable resources uh, and therefore enjoy a measure of status and standing in their communities which allow them to establish relationships with critical institutions including political parties. The powerful crime boss, the Don, is able at times to project an image of being legitimate. This plus the power distinguishes them from the ordinary petty criminal. Now, if I may say something about their relationship with the community, of course, this is closely related to their relationship with the party. They use the wealth and the political influence to embed themselves in the community. So a number of these dons, Coke including, uh, ran welfare projects within the community from basic school, um, funding of basic schools uh, within the community, uh, computer training uh, for young people who have, have left school and so forth. So if you saw in the uh, in the events, final events uh, leading to the operation in Tivoli Gardens, there were demonstrations, I believe some 800 women in white demonstrated in support of coke, uh, we will die for coke and so forth. This is because of the benefits that the community derive from their presence, their protection, their welfare, and other benefits such as access to utilities, free utilities. The JPSCO, for example, estimated that in June 2010, at the time of the operation in Tivoli Gardens, only 1% of the residents of Tivoli Gardens paid, actually paid utility bills or paid light bills. Coke, like so many other powerful criminal dons, remained at liberty for a long time uh, because of, in a word, their relationships. In two words, their relationships and the weakness of the criminal justice system. Uh, the relationship with the party provides them with access to opportunities for enrichment, accumulation of considerable wealth through contracts, typically construction contracts, and um, offering of services to government of various types. Uh, these contracts may run into tens of millions, in some cases, hundreds of millions. Uh, secondly, it's protection. Uh, the party affords them access to a wide range of contacts and relationships with lawyers, uh, highly skilled lawyers who are willing to work and to, to represent them. Uh, access to a network of communities across the island, uh, which helps to uh, facilitate their business and indeed to spread, um, the spread crime throughout the island and abroad. So the wealth and the protection uh, that they get from the party insulates them and affords them this degree of impunity, if you wish. The evidence that is available to us suggests that Coke's organization was well prepared. Right? This was a place that was highly equipped to deliver violence. As I recall it, the community was highly mobilized and highly mobilized many weeks before the operation uh, with an elaborate system of lookouts and guards and so forth. Uh, one estimate that a professional um, brought to, made and brought to my attention was that perhaps three, maybe as many as 400 persons were involved in the defense of Coke, the defense of Tivoli, and I mean armed uh, defense now. Mop-up operations um, following on Coke's arrest. Uh, so, as I recall it, almost 100 weapons were found, um, including 45 rifles, a number of explosive devices, grenades, um, 50 caliber shells, pretty sophisticated stuff. I believe that the Jamaican government eventually 
agreed to sign the extradition order because there was a confluence, if you wish, a convergence of pressures from two sources, um, one external, one internal. Uh, the external pressures were relentless and came from the U.S. administration, which is very powerful. Um, U.S. is a very powerful country in the world. There was also considerable internal pressure. Uh, internal pressure from the opposition political party, which is bad enough for any political administration, but equally importantly, pressure from civil society. Uh, there was a partnership which involved the um, PSOJ, represented employers, it involved the unions, and it involved other elements of civil society. And the partners at that point during the uh, Dodos crisis, uh, I believe, stopped attending the meetings and signaled to government that if you wanted this collaboration to continue, then you would have to sign the extradition order. Um, also, there were elements of civil society outside of the partnership that clearly expressed uh, their opinions and demanded that the government sign the extradition request. Uh, and I believe that these pressures came uh, from these organizations and from public opinion because people were well aware of the corrupt relationship uh, between Cook and elements in the administration. Uh, so these two things combined, I believe, uh, forced the administration to sign the request. The consequences of corruption in the Dudus case were that the link between politics and organized crime was clearly revealed. There was a stranglehold of dons over community life, no freedom of speech or movement because of violent intimidation of citizens resulting in a serious fall in Jamaica's international standing. What the Cook extradition, conviction and sentencing demonstrates more than anything else is no matter how strong the political connections, no matter the level and length of political corruption, the Jamaican people, the Jamaican authorities, in association with our development partners, can defeat political corruption and political crime. But for this to be done, National Integrity Action supports what Jamaica requires, robust laws and law enforcement to outlaw political intimidation in any community, to outlaw gangs and gangsterism, and to hold culpable those who are connected to the gangs and facilitating gangsterism. It requires community renewal to empower the people in inner city communities. But most of all, Jamaica requires each and every citizen to speak out, to have their voices heard. Were that not the case in the Coke extradition, the government would not have been forced to reverse its position to extradite Coke and to ensure that organized crime suffered this major defeat. I think the government, they can create more open doors for people to be more innovative because you have persons on the streets who are not fully occupied in what they do. If the people who we are looking up to and who we have voted in to lead us do not do and are the right thing and are not accountable, who, why should anybody else be accountable? So me as a Jamaican, I stay straight. I try to curve my thing, I try to put it in my youth them, to curve it, and I try my best. I know me alone can do it, but I still do my part. So we need some intelligence, and within the intelligence we need a sort of philosophical idea that is continued and perpetuated in the media, because this is where the youth them latch on to know information. Also, if they get something for the children them to do, it will help to cut down the crime in the country. Now that you have heard from our experts and from the commentators, how much corruption is cast in Jamaica, how much it is holding us back from building on our immense achievements. Where do we go from here? I can tell you where NIA is going. We are going to continue building awareness through films like this one, through town hall meetings where we hear from you. We're going to be continuing to insist on urgent passage of campaign finance reform legislation and the establishment of a single anti-corruption commission. 
but NIA alone cannot do it. We need the help of our international partners to ensure that the taxes which their taxpayers pay in order to help us here in Jamaica reach the target. But most of all, we need the help of each and every one of you. Get involved with NIA. Call our office to report whatever you see that looks corrupt. You be a watchdog. Be a searchlight. Visit our website. Help us to make Jamaica the place of choice to live, to work, to raise families and to do business so that sooner more than later we get the Jamaica that we are capable of achieving with the talent of our people. And medias like this need to send out information properly and don't edit out everything we say. Yes. <laughs> The following are excerpts from messages to NIA published in NIA's first anniversary supplement from the Governor General, the Prime Minister and the Leader of the Opposition of Jamaica. I unequivocally support the urgent message of the NIA and every one of us to close ranks against corruption. We must win the battle against corruption so that Vision 2030 may become a reality and this beautiful land fulfill its destiny of playing her part in advancing the welfare of the whole human race. We have and will continue to support the aims of the NIA and the nation can be assured that this government will continue to strengthen legislation on good governance, accountability and transparency as part of a determined effort to detect, deter and punish those caught and found guilty of corruption wherever such acts occur. I'd like to congratulate the NIA for your efforts to combat corruption. You have brought to the forefront the absolute need for honesty, decency, integrity, transparency, and accountability in all our proceedings and processes. You've done a great job in enhancing the public awareness of this challenge. Oh, it's a dog in the world. Oh, what a la la la. It's a dog in the world. Fire, uh, uh, it's a dog.